So hi and welcome to episode four of Who's Zooming Who? And with me this week is Sharon Flynn from the IUA, that's the Irish Universities Association Project Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning. Interestingly enough, this is the first time myself and um, Sharon have met. Um, so uh, I've been lucky, I guess, uh, up until our, maybe unlucky, I don't know. Um, all, the, all the people I've spoken to were people I'd known. So I'm, I'm using the podcast to broaden my, uh, my, my pool of friends. Uh, but even though we wouldn't have met, um, we certainly would have moved in similar uh, enough circles and, and would have had lots of uh, people in common. And uh, I won't spoil the surprise by saying who's coming next week, but uh, what I will say is the person who's coming next week is the person who told me I should speak to, 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 to both Orna, uh, who we spoke to last week, and Sharon this week. So um, those of you who are paying attention will be able to work it out. But anyway, uh, 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 enough, enough from me. Um, Sharon, you're very, very welcome um, to the podcast. Um, so perhaps you might like to just give us a quick introduction to yourself and maybe to the IUA project. Absolutely. And thanks a million, Ken, for inviting me on this. And when you reached out to me, of course, um, I said that I felt I had known you already um, because we have exchanged um, Twitter conversations and that sort of thing. So, you know, I, I think the, the world is a smaller place, really, because of uh, the likes of Twitter and social media. But yeah, um, so I'm joining you today from sunny Galway, um, which is has been my home for the last 25 years. But I'm con currently seconded from NUI Galway to the Irish Universities Association, um, where I am project manager for the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning project, as you mentioned. So that project is funded through the, the HEA Innovation and Transformation funding scheme. It's a three-year project which started in January of 2019. Um, it involves all seven of the IUA universities. Um, and um, so I've been there since the beginning of May last year, uh, which is when I, I came in. Um, the project itself, there are three broad aims. Um, the first one is to enhance the um, digital skills of the university graduates. The second one is to enhance the digital learning experience of the students at our universities. But the third aim and, and the main thrust of the project itself is to um, provide professional development for staff who teach or support learning within the Irish universities. So that is um, the, the approach that we're taking um, and it's, it's the thing that we're focusing on while still trying to keep the students and the graduates um, front and centre. So we have to keep coming back to them and remembering that it's that group of people that we are really trying to impact. So um, I can tell you a little bit about the project. Um, we have, I have a steering committee that I report to, which meets um, about, um, so I think about six times last year. We were scheduled to meet four times this year, but there's been a couple of emergency ones that have slipped in um, since we got started. So, so that has got uh, representatives from each of the seven universities. We have somebody from, um, the National Forum, somebody from THEA, um, and Kevin McStravick from the USI. And we also have representation from the HEA on that. And so that group provides broad direction. But what I think is the most important part and, and the most exciting part of my job is the fact that I get to work with um, individual people on the ground within each university. So the, the funding from the HEA, most of it has gone into um, recruiting a person or persons um, who are um, who are working within each of the seven universities, um, mostly in central roles, but some not in central roles, and and it's those people coming together, which I think is the real strength of the project, and and learning from each other. So um, I've got a great group of people. I think my project team is about um, how many people? It's about. Um, 10 or 11 people in total from across the seven universities and I've got a fantastic student associate intern who works with me as well and um, so that's trying again to keep the, the student voice front Very and good. center yeah yeah, yeah no, it, 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 it sounds absolutely fantastic and I uh, suppose I probably should declare coming from the IOT sector I'm terribly jealous um, but um, I know that we'll, we, 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 we will um, learn from, from, from your experience and and Look, the, the, there is lots of um, there is lots of that cross pollination uh, goes on um, 
right across the, the all HEIs, I think, in, in Ireland yeah. and the National Forum, in fairness, have done great work um, in that regard. Um, Completely. Uh, I do find it really interesting that um, having those embedded staff within the, each, of the, in, each of the partner universities, um, that must be really, really good. And I can see the benefit of that. I mean, because a lot of the time, uh, certainly we find that we're so busy just doing what we're what doing what we're doing day to day that we're probably solving the same problems that some of our colleagues in CIT or um, LIT or any of the other institutes of technology are are are, are coming across and um, we're 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 literally reinventing the wheel. Um, so yeah, it must be great to do that. I'm also really interested in I, I probably had seen what some of the work you were doing from the professional development point of view. Um, but it's interesting that two of the three sort of pillars on which the project is built are, are student focused in terms of mm-hmm. ad, gra- graduate attributes and um, the, 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 the student experience. Um, again, I'll hold my hand up and, and, and sort of de- declare my bias this year. I'm a, um, I feel like a, 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 a bit of a fraud as an educator, um, but far, far more familiar uh, territory as a student as a I've occupied that role um, far more frequently than than <laughs> than, 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 than the other. Um, sometimes not so bad, sometimes not so good. Yeah. But you know, um, and it is. I mean, it's 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 completely changed. I I came back to college um, in WIT in 2013 um, after having uh, worked in industry for a long time and um, hadn't been in formal education in almost 20 years and even though I would have been a early adopter in terms of technology um, the digital learning experience, even at that stage had changed so much. Um, mm. uh, and I remember a, a, a chap that I worked with who was printing out an infeasibly large number of PDF documents that he was never, ever going to get to read, but he felt good printing them out. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I remember kind of recounting to him my original college experience and he looked at me as if to say, no, no, that, that was in college because what you mean you didn't have computers and what you mean you didn't have, uh, you, d- you didn't have, um, yeah. you didn't, you didn't have the internet. So I suppose it's interesting that um, digital is so much at the heart, I guess, of, of, of everything that we do now um, and no more so than in the midst of this crisis. I mean, um I'm sitting at home, as you can see, and you're sitting at home. And I'm as, sitting at as, home, yeah. As, 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 <laughs> as we can see. Um, and for how much longer, we're not sure, but um, um, we're, we're, we're starting to get used to it now, uh, I guess. Um, digital is, is, is all of what um, it, it's about at the moment. So um, I, I know at the start of all this, and, and it appeared on my radar, and, 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 and I very much liked the, the, the spin you had put on it, um, if I was going to start teaching online, I wouldn't start here. Um, so maybe you kind of could talk a little bit about how things have changed um, as a result of the, the, the COVID-19 closure that we're, we're all um, dealing with at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I suppose one thing um, to keep in mind, for me at least, you know, I've been around a long time, Ken, um, and I started teaching online back in, um, probably the the early two thousands, um, you know, when it, it was really quite unusual to be doing things that way sure. then. Um, but I was teaching as part of um, an online masters. I, I used to lecture in information technology in NUI Galway, and I was teaching as part of an online masters in collaboration with Regis University in Colorado. Um, and and that's really that's that's the basis of a lot of my thinking around the teaching and learning online because teaching online is a whole different ball game than um, teaching in the classroom. It's, it's completely different techniques. It's different course organization, everything. So the notion, I mean, if you had told me two months ago that every single lecture in the country was going to have to teach online, I'd have laughed at you. I would have expected um, the world to implode um, with, with this development. And, and I, I, I am I, amazed I think at, some at people, how we've done. So, some people probably think that it has, but um, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, 
they, they, they do seem to be coping. And, and, and no, you're absolutely right. And I mean, I suppose I've had both online and, and offline learning experiences, but I've been an online user for, yeah, I, I won't embarrass myself by, by, by saying how long. Um, but I think in an online space, you have to be a lot more deliberate in terms of, um, and, and probably a lot more specific in, in outlining exactly what, what people, what, what are these yeah. people need to do and what, what the expectations are. Um, my hope though probably is because people have been forced to do it now um, they might find that some of the tools that are there aren't as intimidating as perhaps they the thought they were um, and that uh, while they might uh, well I hope that they don't feel that they're doing it perfectly they might sort of say well yeah this now that i've done this it's not as bad as i thought and maybe not as hard as i thought and, and i know i can get better at this and look we you know we all, we all have to be beginners at some stage um there's nobody born an expert so um i, I i'm choosing to see the the, the positive side the positive side of it uh, in, in 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 that regard i mean obviously you've ramped up so, some of the, the the work you were doing in the project right? yeah so so the immediate impact on the project was that most of my team were pulled back into frontline services sure. so kind of pulled off project activities because believe it or not i had a beautiful project plan it was color coded <laughs> and everything <laughs> wonderful <laughs> Um, I had even factored in the fact that my my daughter is is doing the leaving search this year okay. so I had all her yeah. dates in so that's yes. all thrown out of the way completely um so yeah the, the the immediate impact has been that that everybody's been pulled back in and I think it was was it Martin Weller during the week talked about um um how amazing it is that our ed tech people our instructional designers have become part of the, the frontline emergency services really when it comes to education and they've done a heroic job just because what we're doing at the moment is continuation of teaching yes it's it's um technology dependent teaching it's not teaching online if, you know by the strictest definition so basically everybody's just trying to get by and survive until assessment finishes yes and i think to be honest i think that you know that the teaching online was one thing Assessment online was a whole other ballgame. Yeah. Um, that has been a huge challenge for people. And I think at this stage, everybody is exhausted. Um, the, the ed tech people, my team, staff, students, everybody is just completely exhausted. But I think that what's going to be really, really important after this, well, two things, I suppose, that the project is, is trying to look at at the moment. One is that we need to try and understand what's happening just now trying to document what's going on and what the response has been and, and is. Um, and then the second thing is that we need to have a little bit of breathing space and time to reflect. Sure. And to look back and say, okay, we managed it, we succeeded, we've come out the other side, some of us. Um, but what did we learn from it? What could we do better? And how can we build upon it? Exactly as you said, I, I agree. I think that um, people will be a little bit maybe a little bit more emboldened when it comes to the use of the tools. And hopefully they'll realize that actually some of those tools worked well. Mm -hmm. um, we could do better, absolutely. But, but I can see how, you know, uh, whether it's the virtual classroom or whether it's recording a lecture or whether it's just trying to use the VLE more, um, that worked quite well, actually. And I can see how I could use that going into the future. So one of the... Um, one of the basic pillars of, of the project that, that I've been leading has been um, pedagogy first, meaning we don't start with the tools. Sure. We don't start with the bright, shiny technology. <laughs> um, we talk about, you know, what we're trying to achieve with our teaching, um, look at the, the learning objectives, um, and then start looking at how you might be able to use technology to support that. Now, that's gone out the window over the last couple of weeks. But it would be nice to come back to that pedagogy first sure. approach because there's no returning to the normal that we were familiar with before for well, various reasons. Yeah. You know, we, we, we know that for a start, the Leaving Cert is going to be late. So first years are going to be starting late. Sure. We don't know when other classes will be starting. Maybe they'll start in September or maybe they'll be delayed as well. Uh, we know that we can't have 
300 people sitting in a lecture theater together. We know that's not happening. Yeah. So we're going to have to start thinking about how we're going to manage things sure. um, in the next academic year. But hopefully what we haven't had until now, and I think that was a point um, that was very well made during the Gosta Goes Global, we haven't had time to think about what we're doing over the last six weeks. But what we will have between now and September, October is a little bit more time. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully we can think a little bit more about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're 100% right. Um, I mean, even going back to the original closure back in um, the 12th of March, it was two weeks. Um, we were told it was two weeks and some of us even believed it was going to be two weeks. Yeah. Um, we, we, we seem very uh, <laughs> naive now, um, almost five weeks later. Um, or is it six? Six weeks later. Um, I think it's six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so we, we've even started to lose count of uh, lose count of the days and, and um, I think the best explanation I heard for, for days uh, recently was that um, uh, every day is blurs day um, so <laughs> yeah. it's like um, yeah, you, you, you really don't know what uh, uh, what, what, what day yeah. it is um, but having said that I, I am sort of slightly amazed as well as how how we've uh, sort of accepted this reality um, and for the most part are getting on with it and trying to make um, uh, the best of it. Um, I think you touched on it earlier on there when you said if someone told you t t two months ago um, you wouldn't have believed it and, and I, I think actually the entire way we're living at the moment if you if you mm -hmm. if you even suggested that um, in January um, or early February people would have kind of looked at you um, like you should be committed because yeah, yeah, it's, it's like this, <laughs> yeah, that that couldn't happen in this country, um, and it is, and we're, we're we're sort of in it now, and we're not even really sure um, what the what what the end date or end date or dates um, or what that's mm -hmm. going to going to look like. I do think we're we're probably lucky the time of year it happened. Um, in that the days are getting longer, the sun is shining, the skies are blue, and it's it, that that's nice. I wouldn't like to think of trying to do this in um, October or November um, and have Christmas and have Christmas yeah. in, in the um, in 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 the distance. Um, I didn't. And we've been I, so lucky with the weather. Just absolutely, incredibly lucky. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Um, I didn't realise you had a had, had a, a, a a daughter doing the leaving cert, mm. so that that obviously um, makes things. Uh, a little bit more real as well. Um, I, I, I don't envy you that, that, that particular um, challenge. Um, oh, yeah. But, but you know, we, we all have our, our challenges. It's, uh, I've started having um, two or usually two sort of um, Zoom coffee breaks with my team during right. the week. Just set it up on Zoom and whoever is available will come along. And we just sure. have the bit of a chat, you know. Yeah. But I've, I've got people in all sorts of different situations between having having young kids or having, um, you know, elderly relatives or, or whatever else, everybody's yeah. got Absolutely. something going yeah. on. Yeah. 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 We, we, we started doing something similar inside in WIT. We have a, a, a virtual tea room um, every morning between half 10 and 12 um, yeah. and people drop in at different times. Um, I won't say that we get hundreds um, of people, I think the most we've had at one time is about 10 and um, the conversations are about almost everything except the technology. Um, yeah. But, but, but we're there to answer those questions um, if, if, if they're asked, uh, if they're asked as well. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. Of course, in that we're, we're now looking into um, a first semester that is probably going to be unlike um, any mm -hmm. first semester in, 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 I was going to say recent history, but just in history, full stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. But we do have the time, I think, and we have the space to reflect on learning from the lessons of, of what we've just been through. Well, what can we do better for September? Um, you know, I think we've done a fabulous job and actually what I've loved watching um, are your little uh, vodcast videos that are far more professionally produced than this one. Um, but, but um, giving a good vignette of uh, how lecturers and, and indeed students are mm -hmm. getting on. You've, you've done about 20 of those, I think at this stage, is it? Or? Oh, it's probably coming up on 20. And, um, and, and I have to give full credit to my colleague, Kate Wood in the IUA. She's the, the 
person who's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting behind that. Um, so she actually, she, she does the bit of editing at the end and she's been putting in the subtitles and all that kind Very of good. thing. Um, but they're, they're great. We've, we've really tried to get a range of situations, you know, not just disciplines, um, yeah. but, but people in different situations. So we've had, um, you know, international students who are, who are still here. Um, we have people with not brilliant Wi-Fi. We've had um, PhD students. We have first year students. So we've, we've really tried to get a range. They're all quite positive, you'll notice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I suppose because they're coming out of the IUA, um, we, we are trying to make sure that, that they're realistic. So sure. they're, not, they're not told, you know, you must tow the party line or, yeah. or anything like this. And we're trying to get it as honest as possible. But they are positive. Um, we are about to launch, probably about in about another week or so, um, uh, a, an invitation to students to create their own and share them on social media. Um, I'm not sure how positive those will be. Sure. Uh, but we wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for the most part, I mean, that positivity, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the old glass half full, glass uh, half empty, or as some people say, the glass is just too big to begin with. Um, it's, it's, you know, we're in this, yeah. You, you don't have any choice over that, but you do have a choice over how to react. Um, and that's, that's where you have that, that, that locus of control that, you know, you, you, you can take some ownership of, well, I can make this the best for me. And I think by and large, um, I've been very impressed by the resilience, not just students have shown, but staff in terms of just getting on with it. Um, and, and just the general yeah. public at large in, in terms of, you know, um, if, you, if, if you told people, as I said, only a short few months ago that you'd be queuing six feet apart uh, to get into a supermarket, um, they, they'd have probably sort of said, no, that's never going to happen in this country, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I think most of the time, given a chance, people will be positive. Um, so I'm not a bit surprised to see that the videos are positive. And I think, yeah. I, I think actually it's good. Um, it's good that they are because it, it sort of... Um, that they're a little bit more uplifting than, you know, somebody just complaining for the sake of uh, complaining. <laughs> um, I know, yeah. I think as well, Ken, it's interesting. I think the other thing that it has shown is not just resilience, but genuine care. Sure. Um, particularly, you know, the, the staff, any of them that have contributed to the series, you can see how much they care that their students are getting on okay. Um, and likewise, when you hear the students talking about what their lecturers are doing, it's not perfect. You know, yeah. none of it is perfect. But the students really appreciate the efforts that staff are going to. Uh, absolutely. And I think that's the kind of stuff that, you know, no amount of um, technology can make you care. Um, mm -hmm. And no amount of technology can prevent you from caring as well. So, um, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, I'm probably going to, to get the, um, the quote wrong, but it's, it's, people won't care what you said. They'll just care about how you made, uh, how, how you made them feel. Um, and I think mm. that's, that, 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 that's kind of important at, at, at this juncture, particularly when people are in very uncertain times and they're, they're filled with, oh my God, uh, what's going to happen next? Um, knowing that that, they, they're, that their lecturers and all the professional support staff and the learning technologists are there to try and get them um, to the other side of this thing um, and that they're on the same side and we all want the same uh, successful outcome. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. rem remarkably empowering and it's probably, uh, I'm not saying that, that, that in face-to-face -face classes that, lecturers don't care of course they do but maybe because it has to be a bit more explicit now than it might otherwise have been um people are probably seeing um seeing lecturers go uh, above and uh, above and beyond um what they were typically uh, what they were typically used to and you know mm -hmm. long, long, long may that continue having said all that um i'm also keen to to stress that you know the people have lives that they need to lead and people have other things that they need to do um, outside of their um, 
day job as well. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, um, I'd like to see people strike a, a, a reasonable balance um, where they can, where they can achieve, uh, where they can achieve both, both outcomes. So where do you see the project going as a result of um, the, the, the swerve, I guess, that this has um, caused in, 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 <laughs> in, in, in the rollout or, um, it was a three-year project, I think, when you started. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we're coming up to the halfway point. Okay. Which is a, a little bit scary. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, and I'm not sure if I have all of the answers at this stage, but we always said that the vision, if we had a vision for the project, the vision would be the mainstreaming of the use of digital technology sure. for teaching and learning. Um, we were trying in in a lot of cases to take a um a discipline based approach in that um we were trying to work with program teams so rather than building up individual champions which has tended to happen in the past what we wanted to do was to try and get um to, to raise the level of technology use across the board within a program so sure. that students would get what I suppose what was happening was students would come in and, and it would depend very much on which lecturer they got, how much digital technology was used. And as I said, we do try and take a pedagogy first approach. So it's not just about the technology, it's, it's letting the technology support the pedagogy. I think what's interesting here is that suddenly all of those barriers whereby people said, you know, oh, we don't have time, we don't, we don't need this technology. Um, those have suddenly been removed and suddenly everybody is having to use technology sure. in their teaching and, and will have to going into the, the future because either way, there's going to have to be an, an awful lot more blended learning going on. Um, so I think the way I feel is that there is the potential for this project to move into something which is not just that sort of peripheral project that's going on, but something that's much more front and center. Sure within each of the, the universities. Um, but I, I mentioned that we, we've, had, um, we've had at least one sort of special steering committee meeting so far. And I think at this stage, we're probably just a little bit too early to be able to determine exactly what's gonna happen over the next um, 18 months or, or more. Um, but I, I really believe that we can do something will really add value and not just to the seven universities. And I know you mentioned this point earlier, but there was always the remit that whatever is produced out of this project um, will be openly available through sure. appropriate channels. And we work yeah. closely with the national forum as well. And I'd like, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to just mention, we, we, we launched a community back at the end of January. It's called the IUA DigEd community. Um, and people can sign up on our, our website and it's open to, to anybody really, but it's aimed at people who are involved in supporting the development of digital skills in staff or students in mm. higher education. Excellent. Um, and at this stage, we've got over a hundred members. Um, the, the numbers have gone up quite a lot over the last few weeks, which I, I think is probably because yeah, of the current yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah. Um, but it's fantastic. And, and, and basically by signing up to the community, it's, it's not a huge deal, but essentially um, you, are, you then get an invite to a webinar that happens every two weeks on a Monday at lunchtime. Um, and the last few webinars, we had one on the Monday just gone by when we had um, Fiona Reardon and Angelica Rizquez were talking about mm -hmm. um, online assessment. Um, a month ago, the, the um, webinar was about... Um, the, the pivot to online, so teaching online in an emergency. And then the one in between was on assessment online in an emergency. Um, and we're getting quite good numbers at those webinars. Um, now, those webinars are open to absolutely anybody, but in order to get emailed the link, you need to sign up to the community. Right. Um, so, so we are trying to build that community aspect, certainly within Irish higher education, and get as many people involved as possible. Because I, I know this might sound, sound a little bit trite now, but um, I really believe that we are so much stronger when we work together. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, think, I, I think you mentioned earlier that this thing about, you know, um, 
that, that maybe, it, you know, in one institution, you're kind of working away on some problem that somebody else has already addressed Absolutely. in another yeah. institute yeah. or somewhere else. And what I'm trying to do is, is, is get over that and yeah. to share and, and have that much more of a, of a community, a community of practice, essentially. Yeah. You know, so, I, I, so that's what we're trying to achieve through this. You're, you're definitely preaching to the converted in, insofar as I'm concerned. Um, and I didn't mean it um, as any criticism of, of, of the work that people do. It's just sometimes you can just get so caught up in, in what you're Absolutely. doing that, that you just don't stop to kind of think, oh, hang on, let's have a look around here and, and Absolutely. see yeah. what everybody's doing. What, what I can tell you is you'll have 101 members um, after, uh, <laughs> after, after, <laughs> after our call today. Um, I suppose I probably um, was, was slightly guilty in that because I, um, I, I'm not attached to a university, although WIT would like to be one, um, we, 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 I, I probably might have thought, yeah, that's, that's, that's for university um, people so yeah no I'll, I'll no it's for it. everybody absolutely yeah. and I, and yeah we, we and we've we've had a good response from um from the the iot's and um from tud as well funnily enough T technical university of dublin is not part of the iua so it's not one of the seven universities that i work with um so i think that's a political thing i've, I've no idea what the heck is going on there but um absolutely everybody is welcome brilliant that that, that that's brilliant to hear what I'm going to do is, we've been talking for a little over half an hour, would you believe? Um, time, time flies when you're uh, having fun. Um, yes. I, found, I found it absolutely fascinating. So if, if, even if nobody else enjoys it uh, or enjoys it, I will. I'm sure they will. Uh, you've been absolutely fantastic. So all that remains for me um, is Dr. Sharon Flynn. Thank you very, very much for your time. And um, you. it was great. It was great to, um, uh, to talk with you. Um, Thank you very much for having me, Ken. It's been lovely, lovely having the chat. Thank you. Likewise, likewise. Thanks a million.